Hi, thanks for joining Your Body Advocate podcast. I'm Ruth Cummings, your host, and today I'm interviewing Willa Kaiser. She's an owner of a homeopathy school and has been around homeopathy for decades. And she's sharing with us some juicy information, things that you can use at home, like a first aid kit, the best books you should have around, all kinds of remedies that you can use for different things that your kids might have or you might have. And I learned some information, even though I've been around homeopathy for a long time. Please enjoy this interview. Let's take a deep breath to relax. Ready? Okay, here we go. You're listening to Your Body Advocate, telling your body's side of the story. The podcast dedicated to supporting and improving your body-mind connection so you can live a pain-free, passion-filled life, dissolving one body tension at a time. Discover the healing properties of your own body language and together let's explore ways to support and improve essential self-talk. Now, here's your host, Master of Encouragement and Body-Mind Life Coach, Ruth Cummings. Well, hello, Willa Kaiser. Thank you for coming on our podcast for Your Body Advocate. Thank you for being here. How are you today? I'm great. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, I'm great. I'm, I'm glad to talk to you about homeopathy. And this is very exciting because I think more people need to know about it. And um, we have a lot to talk about. But before I, we get into our conversation, I wanted to read um, your bio so people know a little bit more about you. Willa is the director of the Caduceus Institute of Classical Homeopathy, which she founded in 1997. Her online courses specialize in teaching homeopathy to homeschooling moms and health professionals. She is a mother and a grandmother. Willa first delved into the healing arts in the 1970s while living in Indonesia, where she studied a meditative and healing movement system for eight years. Upon returning to the United States, Willa encountered homeopathy for the first time and recognized that this was the form of healing she resonated with the most. She has been practicing it ever since. Willa was in the first graduating class of the Pacific Academy of Homeopathic Medicine in Berkeley, California, and became an instructor there for four years, where she learned to teach homeopathy and to design curriculum in the early 90s. She also holds a diploma in advanced homeopathic studies from the dynamic school directed by Jeremy Schur. Welcome, Willa. Woo-hoo. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to be here. Yeah, so you know so much about homeopathy and there's we only have a limited time. So one of the things we had spoken about before was to bring homeopathy to the home, allow people to be comfortable with it in the home. So I know there's some history of homeopathy to start with first, but I would really like, also we had talked about um, something that a kit or something that people can use right now or order online, maybe get in their health food store today to help bring homeopathy to their house. So, but let's start with what are some, what is homeopathy and why should we use it? Well, um, I think I can cover a few bases that you went over in that question. Um, First of all, I'll describe how homeopathy came to be, which was about 200 years ago. There was a German physician named Samuel Hahnemann, and he was very brilliant. He spoke a whole bunch of different languages, but he was really disgusted with the medicine of the time. Uh, when they basically they were using poisons to make people purge and giving them all kinds of very toxic substances. So he didn't want to practice medicine, even though he was a physician. So instead, he was using his massive ability with language to translate medical texts. And he came across a statement in a text saying that cinchona, which is quinine bark, um, was helpful Um, in malaria because it was bitter. And he didn't think that made any sense. So he decided to try some quinine bark himself. 
And lo and behold, when he um, ate the uh, quinine bark, he discovered that he developed um, chills and fever, which are symptoms of malaria. So he developed a hypothesis that of like cures like, which is what homeopathy is basically about. So a substance that can cause a certain condition in um, a healthy person can actually cure uh, those same symptoms when somebody is sick. So that's the basic understanding of what homeopathy is. And um, I can go a little bit into the history from there. Um, he basically sure. continued to discover more remedies and put together Materia Medica, you know, basically uh, descriptions of different remedies uh, based on these provings that he did. A proving is, is when somebody who's healthy takes a remedy and then develops some symptoms, which is how we discover uh, uh, how remedies, what remedies do in homeopathy. But what really made him famous, which is very interesting, is um, his uh, ability, what homeopathy was able to do with epidemics of the time, uh, which of course is extremely relevant for now. So uh, that's where, you know, the history where homeopathy really shone um, in Europe through different kinds of epidemics. Wow, that's fascinating. Now, I know, you know, I was brought up, as you know, or you've heard in some of the other podcasts on homeopathy. And so for me, it's just been part of my, my family and part of my life. But there's so many people I was so shocked to hear through my lifetime who have never heard of things like if they had a bruise, take Arnica. They're like, what? What's that? And um, so I love the history. And I think that the likes versus likes tends to feel not strong enough for so many people and but it is so powerful and um can you speak to that a little bit like the the even though it's so small it's very powerful can you speak about that a little bit sure yeah well basically um from a vitalistic point of view vitalism is kind of the um, understanding that um, our bodies work from a place of energy. So instead of viewing our bodies as a machine, which is more of a materialistic um, um, point of view, we're really looking more at the energy body. So if we're looking at the energy body, we can really uh, break down what any kind of medicine can do into three different categories. Uh, first of all, there's the antipathic, which is anti means against, pathy means the disease. Antipathic is something that goes against the disease, but it also goes against the vital force. So this is like, you know, taking a Tylenol if you've got a fever or taking an antihistamine if you've got um, an allergy or something like that. You're basically, you know, pushing down and suppressing what the body is trying to do for itself. Um, the second category is substitutive. And so that's kind of giving the body what it normally would do for itself, something like a diabetic who takes insulin, or perhaps you could even um, put antibiotics in that category where the immune system isn't quite working well enough. So you give antibiotics to do something that the body normally would do for itself. So the antipathic is in the long run, I mean, it's good when it saves lives, all medicine, you know, can be life-saving, but um, the antipathic is the one that kind of really wears down the vital force and, and has a bad effect on overall long-term health. And the substitutive also has a kind of negative effect in, you know, kind of making the body dependent on these substances that you're giving in substitution for what the body um, should be doing for itself. And then the final kind of medicine is homeopathic. Um, and I use that in a more of a broad term, not just for homeopathy, but that any system that's actually supporting what the vital force is trying to do for itself. And so that's why there's that kind of, you were talking about it, it seems kind of subtle and gentle. It's because it's a whole different experience. Um, and maybe you can speak to that a little bit in terms of your own personal experience with it, that it's more just kind of supporting what your, what your body's trying to do on its own rather than trying to stop it from um, doing it 
you know, another analogy is like, if you have a child crying, you know, if you tell that child, you know, shut up, stop crying, that's sort of the antipathic system. Um, whereas the homeopathic system would be, you know, a gentler approach that's supportive and maybe, you know, bringing like support groups, like bringing a child into a situation where other children have been in a certain circumstance and everybody's kind of supporting each other. So I hope that answers you. Yes, absolutely. I, I love that answer because it shows the subtlety and that I like how, but it supports the entire, the entire system. And we are in a, in a time in our, in medicine where there's so much um, negative, there's so like the amount, especially in America, it's this so shocking to me and to, to many, the statistics of how many uh, people use painkillers, you know, 99% of all the painkillers are used by America. And we're only 3% of the population. And same wow. thing with antidepressants, same thing with many medicines. And I would love for people to consider the effect of homeopathy. And it's so gentle, but it's so powerful. And I would, that's why I keep wanting to try to get this message out. Like you can, there are different ways to solve some issues, solve depression, solve pain, solve a lot of things, headaches. And, the, and, you know, my own story when I had, um, ADHD as a kid, I think that's how it would be described now um, and how homeopathy completely changed that. I had a um, really stuffy nose. I was constantly shaking. You couldn't read my writing. I couldn't sit still. I couldn't read. There were a lot of um, issues, had a hard time with many things and was having a hard time socially because I was moving a lot. And one remedy changed my life. And it, it, I could sit still. Um, I was finally, I was able to do art and many, many changes for me. And so when I hear other parents with children who are really suffering, really, like I was really suffering with my movement, just, just my movement, just to be one thing. And that I could have gone through the, you know, Ritalin and many other uh, shock therapy would be a, an aggressive one, right? Some things that um, you can go through this series of um, Western medicine um, solutions that cause more problems and don't solve the, the core issue. And I was the one of the lucky ones, I think, of getting and finding a remedy. No one around my parents had heard of homeopathy. And here we had tried and, and really found a great uh, remedy. And I'm, I've been trying to talk about it with people and um, having a hard time getting through. So it's, um, I just really want to educate people on the subtlety of it and the power, but how powerful subtlety can be. And it can change your entire, as you said, energetic system. The energetic system though, as I know as a massage therapist, is very, very important and often um, ignored is a rough word, um, maybe um, just pushed aside and not put front and center and not given much importance. And so that's kind of where I'm coming from, where I, why do you think that um, it's been so hard to get this across to our society? Well, um, I think as a society, we all need a good dose of Nux Vomica. Um, <laughs> Nux Vomica, I love that one. <laughs> Nux Vomica is um, a remedy uh, for kind of type A personalities. And basically, our culture is very rushed, very hurried, uh, very ambitious, um, and impatient is probably the key word there. So... Um, you know, we're trained like that uh, from very early on. So it's very uh, much part of our culture. Whereas um, in India, where homeopathy is huge, I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of homeopaths, homeopathic MDs 
in India and thousands of um, homeopathic uh, medical schools in India where people become homeopathic MDs and they're in hospitals, they're treating their homeopathic hospitals where homeopaths are treating very sick patients. So uh, it's a whole different thing in India. Um, but in the US, we are expecting that kind of got a headache, take a pill for it. So, you know, what you were mentioning before about how we're so much using the antidepressants and painkillers, um, we just don't have the patience to kind of go through a real healing process here. Um, and some of it is, you know, we are under a lot of material pressure in terms of, you know, got to, got to get to work, got to pay the rent you know, we're under a lot of pressure. So it's the, you know, it's, we're kind of, that's how we survive in this culture by being kind of hurried and rushed and expecting very quick results. Uh, so, you know, it's a problem um, when you, when it comes to a real healing process. And one of the things I do to educate um, my own clients and encourage my students to educate their their clients as well is to understand the homeopathic healing process um, so that uh, they're not expecting it to feel like taking a Tylenol, but instead that they understand that it's more of a healing, an un unfoldment of healing rather than, um, you know, an instantaneous uh, thing that kind of hits you the way a pill would. That's, that's very interesting that you say that I had a friend who I, who, who had a fall, a bad fall and had, he had some muscles that were sore and he went and got some Arnica to help that. And he took a few pills of the Arnica and it helped him feel better. So what did he do? I, I wasn't available. He was calling me. He was saying, Hey, this is feeling better. He emptied the bottle like took the rest of the homeopathic <laughs> pills. And I think that that speaks very much of our culture. Like, mm -hmm. you know, one Tylenol helps, let's take 20 and see, you know, maybe that'll help me more instead of calming it down, waiting and taking just a little bit in a, a little bit of time. And I agree with the, with your, uh, saying that our culture is so get them, get them, get them. And there's not much self-care. We even, you know, you have to make time to self-care and it's not quite even focused on self-care. It's focused on the hour that you have for self-care because you have to finish your to-do list once you get out of your massage or your acupuncture or whatever you're doing, you know, your spa treatment. And I wish that I would slow down a little bit. I'm trying to get better, um, but I am too caught up super mom, you know, many irons in the fire, many businesses running. <laughs> um, yeah. And a couple months ago, I had about six months ago, I could say that I hadn't had a massage in like four years. And oh, no. that was not, uh, <laughs> that wasn't serving me very well. So I have shifted that, but I understand. I mean, we're all in this, you know, um, system of get them. And I, I agree, like now we need to learn from these other cultures where they're health is better, their food is better, their medicine is better, their family structures are better. Like we are um, slowly losing a lot of the things that made each family great and or in each culture great. And I'm um, excited to try to just spread the opportunity to use homeopathy instead of um, maybe antidepressant or maybe some some things for your thyroid or things for um, uh, uh, hormone therapy. And as you know, people, friends of mine going through menopause or just different things. And, you know, um, what are some, what are some cases that you could share with us that might be really helpful to, for us, some of us to know what homeopathy is capable of? Yeah, I'd love to share some cases. I also wanted to mention that homeopathy was here in the U.S. back in the 1800s and was part of family life. Um, there were homeopathic medical schools here, and many families had home kits 
which is something that we're going to talk about, I believe, during this um, time we have together. Um, so yes, please. having a, a home kit is not a new idea. This is what people had and knew how to use some of the basic remedies. Uh, some doctors gave them out as um, these little packets of powder that were labeled by number. So the people might not know the name of the remedy, but the doctor would just say, oh, take, take packet number two right now because they needed belladonna or something like that. So there is a history in the United States of using homeopathy. I think it is um, really an ultimate form of family care and self-care because uh, you can learn how to use a few remedies um, for yourself and your family. Um, the first module that I teach, which is a six month program, teaches you how to use the 30 most <clears throat> excuse me, the 30 most important homeopathic remedies in home care and teaches you how to take the case properly and um, how to uh, use a, there's a book called The Repertory, which is an index of symptoms um, that was written by a homeopathic uh, doctor named Dr. Uh, James Tyler Kent, and it's still in use today. So you learn how to use uh, these different tools such as the repertory and the materia medica and go a little deeper um, I'm but, writing all this yeah. down. So I have a lot to, I wanted to just, just sure. to interrupt you for one moment. I love yeah. how you're saying that it's the ultimate home health care. Yeah. Right. And that, that people used to give it out almost probably as, as free, like here, here's how to take care of your family. Like right. it was a true a, a desire for people to be able to care for themselves and care for their family. And um, I just, I, I think I'm going to name your podcast, the ultimate healthcare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really you know? is for home health. Yes. You know, having, having a little kit on hand, you can just do so much for those middle of the night emergencies, you know, for people with children. Um, it's just a lifesaver. And uh, to just have that sense of um, security and calm, because you know that you have something there that you can help with. Um, when I had, I had my first two children in Indonesia before I learned about homeopathy, which is kind of a pity because my daughter developed croup. And I just remember that night, uh, you know, with her having croup, um, where she was just, you know, struggling to breathe and how terrifying it is, you know, to have your child in that state. But, um, you know, now I know those remedies and if I had had a kit and I've helped lots and lots of people find those remedies and know about those remedies uh, so that when that happens, yeah. I love that. I interrupted you though. So you were talking about, um, well, um, what are the top say 10 remedies that maybe every family or every mom should know? Well, <laughs> um, Arnica, of course, is on the top, you know, that would be, let me just take a look at my kit so I can choose 10 of them. Arnica um, is on the top because that's the remedy for um, injuries, um, soft tissue injuries. Anytime anybody has any sort of traumatic injury, the, usually the first remedy you give is Arnica. A lot of people just even carry it around so that something happens when they're out and about. Uh, so Arnica is obviously number one. But another one, especially, um, well, for people who have children, we have the ABCs of the nursery, um, which are aconite, and that's a, a great croup remedy um, and a good remedy for sudden high fever. Um, belladonna, which is another um, remedy for fever. I have a belladonna case I can share. And the C of the ABC is chamomilla which is the remedy for cranky, grouchy children or babies <laughs> uh, when, when nothing, um, nothing seems to suit them, when babies are teething and cranky. So we call those the ABCs in the nursery. So those, those four remedies. And then from there, arsenicum is probably another one just because it's a great remedy for um, any kind of you know, food poisoning or it's just so many different uses. It's also an incredible remedy for anxiety um, and uh, feeling like the world is getting chaotic and wanting to get it more under control. So 
Arsenica, how many is that? Five? Was that five so far? You were saying Let's ten. One, you two, want three. another five? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> another five. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about children and babies somewhat here, um, since we started with the ABCs, but Ipecac which um, is a remedy for, you know, vomiting, uh, getting those kind of stomach flus where there's a lot of intense vomiting. Um, Bryonia has been very important uh, in the COVID pandemic um, and is probably the best preventative. Uh, many homeopaths are finding it as the best preventative because that's another way homeopathy can be used is prophylactically. So if you've been exposed to COVID, um, taking bryonia on its own, bryonia is known as the grouchy bear remedy because uh, it's uh, when you're in a state of, of, you know, feeling kind of hot and thirsty and don't want to be disturbed and don't want to move. Um, it's known for having like a headache that's so bad that you don't even want to move your eyeballs. It's that kind of, you know, just having to stay, stay completely still. So uh, I didn't that's mention great. pulsatilla yet. Oh, you haven't, right. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, so like pulsatilla is, the, is weeping and, um, and clingy when a child is weepy and clingy and kind of moody and I have a pulsatilla case actually to share as well. Okay. So that's enough. Yeah. Let's hear okay. some that's of your a lot. cases. <laughs> I know that's a lot. I mean, I love these though. So tell me some of the, yeah. What was that? Um, the Belladonna case. Okay. So when I, when I, inter I just interviewed Carl Robinson, he was talking about how they're talking that Belladonna is for hiding and as our culture and many cultures and humans in general are hiding, he thinks that his, his little uh, discussion group, that Belladonna needs to be given to all humans so we don't hide. Oh, so wow. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, as I mentioned, these are all cases over the years that have been handed in people um, who go through our basic program where you, we learn how to uh, use these uh, 30 most important remedies. Um, these are cases that were handed in as their final project um, for that over, you know, so we have, I have many, many cases because the school's been around for a while. Um, so this is a case of actually vaccinosis, interestingly enough. So homeopathy can treat the symptoms that can arise after taking a vaccine. And this started way back in Hahnemann's time, 200 years ago, where um, the smallpox vaccine um, was originally coming out. And by the way, Hahnemann was a fan of the vaccine. He thought it was great. He thought it was very similar to homeopathy. You know, they, they'd scrape a little bit of smallpox on your arm and it would make you immune. So he, he was not against vaccines, just, just to say something that people probably find very surprising, but you can read it right in his book, The Organon. Um, but anyway, this is a child who had gone in for her routine vaccines, um, a two-year-old girl. And um, so there, this little girl was vomiting and um, would only wake long enough to cry out. Her fever was 107. They brought her to the yeah. ER. Um, so this was like a really scary case and they, the allopathic doctors were continuing to just tell her them to give her, you know, the Tylenol, but they were very, very worried because the child was either delirious or unconscious or on the verge of unconscious and vomit and just, you know, waking up to vomit. So a very, very sick um, little baby girl. And uh, there was this characteristic brain cry, um, but based on the very, very high fever and the delirium, um, she gave her belladonna um, because Be Be belladonna has, you know, the shrieking, that kind of crying, 
um, brain inflammation, which, you know, was a guess on her part, but, but there is something called a brain cry that was an expression that, that was used by um, homeopaths and um, doctors in that time and very, very high uh, heat. So um, very, very high fever. So the child did um, recover well. Um, from the belladonna. She gave her a 200 C potency because that was all that they had, the highest they had. She would have given a higher potency if she had had it. Um, and within minutes, there was a giant pool of sweat under the little girl's head, her and her fever broke. So the belladonna, you know, as often happens when the case is very, very intense like this, and then you meet it with a high potency, it often, the response is often very fast too. So that's kind of a little bit of a dramatic belladonna case, um, which hopefully we don't see too often where a child is that sick, but um, good, good to know about. Yes. It's good to know it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you have another, some other cases you wanted to? Would you like me just to go through the cases? Sure. I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. I think that people always like to hear, you know, some real life stories and how it works. And besides yeah. us just talking about it, I think it's kind of fun to hear like what people have actually experienced. So yes, I would love to hear your cases if you don't mind. Sure. Sure. Okay. So this is a case. These are um, another child case, actually. So it's actually a lot of these are child cases. That's probably because most of my students are moms. So we end up <laughs> and they they have a lot of they have a lot of practice with their own family. So that's probably <laughs> why I have so many child cases in here. All right. So this is a four year old little boy who rarely gets sick. And um, so this child um, was developing um, what looked like a cold or something like that, started with a bunch of sneezing. Um, there was a lot of clear nasal discharge, which was bland. That's important for the remedy that was eventually given. Um, and then his nose got pretty stuffed up and he was complaining that he couldn't breathe through his nose. So he was stuffy with a bland discharge. And again, these are kind of keynotes of this remedy. Um, so, um, he had started feeling bad at the park at around 11:30 AM and wanted to be carried back to the car. So he was feeling a little more clingy than usual. He wanted to be carried. And when he was in the car, he cried a lot about the cat that they had taken care of that had recently died. So basically this little boy was in a kind of state of grief over this kitty that had died and he was feeling clingy and having, you know, this stuffy nose with bland discharge. And then he fell asleep in the car. Um, his face was, um, when they got home, he was lethargic, um, no fever, but his face was red and his cheeks were flushed. And he complained that his heart was hurting him. So Aww. we could really see that there's, you know, there's a, a sadness and a grief going on for him. Um, seemed sensitive to light and noise. He's sleepy and had a sweaty head and he wanted company. He wanted to be around people. Um, and he even asked at one point, how long am I going to live? This is a little four-year-old saying this. So, you know, these kind of little details really help when you're doing homeopathy. So, um, so he was also uh, not thirsty, um, which is another kind of keynote over uh, for this remedy. Um, and so the remedy, I think you know. Do you do you know the remedy? I think I do. Is it pulsatia? Yeah. Yeah. Very okay. good. I could I could kind of tell by looking at you that you were like, oh yeah, I know that remedy. I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. So pulsatilla you know, this was a kind of classic pulsatilla case, a child who's in grief and crying, um, the bland discharge, the stuffy nose, the wanting to be carried, um, that sort of thing. So probably the um, etiology or the cause of this state, you know, in terms of a holistic, on a holistic level was that this kitty died. And so that was a real hit to his vital force. And he went into a state of grief and then started developing um, physical symptoms as well. So they um, 
the homeopath, this was actually um, not the homeopath's child, but a friend, a friend, uh, the child of a friend. Uh, he gave, uh, she gave uh, pulsatilla 30C, one dose every two hours, and uh, received an email from the mom the next day. The subject line was holy pulsatilla. <laughs> she said the pulsatilla was miraculous. Um, she gave um, him one dose and he went to sleep for 10 minutes. And this is what often happens with children when they have acute problems. If you give them the right remedy, they often right away fall asleep because they're kind of more natural than we are. We've always got so much going on in our heads that we may not do that. But with children, if you give them the right remedy, they'll often just you know, crash, they'll go to sleep. And then when he woke up after 10 minutes, he said, Hey, today is movie night. I want some popcorn. <laughs> and then everything was fine after that. So the pulsatilla worked really quickly on him. And again, a really easy prescription for anybody who, I mean, you, you would have, you, you knew to give him pulsatilla from the description as well. So, you know, once well, you know it, a little bit about these remedies. Right. I was about to say that, you know, um, you just get to, you get to know what you, you memorize it. And because they, you know, like apis for any type of bee sting, my, my dad is a beekeeper. My mom is allergic to bees. So we know apis very well. And it really does work. She starts puffing up and she gets apis and it just takes care of it. There's just, you know, nukes vomica. We, you know, I gave that to my daughter to take uh, with her to school and um, to college. And there's just different ones that we know, like arsenicum is for food poisoning. And, and you're saying that it's also for anxiety. I, I had forgotten that. We also use Ignatia in my family for, and for my clients um, for anxiety and for grief. And there's, you know, there's just all these um, that we get, you know, we memorize as if you're around homeopathy. So tell me more, since we only have, I know we're almost out of time already. Can you tell us more about the home kit? Let's talk about that so that people know what that's about, where to get it, and they can start memorizing these things and trying to use them on their own. Sure. Um, well, a lot of different farm. There are other home. There are homeopathic pharmacies in the United States. There are some really? very good ones. Yeah. Um, one uh, pharmacy, one professional pharmacy over on the West Coast is Hahnemann Pharmacy, um, which is um, north of San Francisco in the Bay Area. But there are many others. There's ABC Homeopathy. Um, there are Indian pharmacies that some of our um, students get the larger remedy kits uh, from. And of course, the boron blue tubes you can get pretty much in Whole Foods and any, they have a, usually a good selection at any Whole Foods or any health food store. So if you need a remedy, um, if you kind of have an idea of what you need, you might want to get a book such as Everybody's Guide to Homeopathic Medicine by Dana Allman, which kind of gives you some um, ideas of how to use these basic remedies. But the kit that I recommend people start with just because it's really portable and high quality remedies is from Helios Pharmacy, which is actually in the UK, but you know, shipping it to the US is not a big deal. Um, one of the things I like is that the vials are all made out of glass. And I would say the size of this is what, maybe four by six. It's a very tiny little kit um, because, um, and then it has these little glass vials and it has 36 remedies in it. Um, wow. And from what I've seen, um, you can actually purchase this kit on Amazon these days. You can also go to the Helios website and have it shipped from there. And if you have, you know, family, if you want to buy a bunch of them, I'll often buy them five at a time because then you get a little bit of a discount and they ship out really fast. They arrive really fast. So that's a kit that if people want to get started, you know, on homeopathy, it has a little bit of an explanation, a little booklet that comes Oh, good. That says a little bit about the remedies, but also having a book such as Everybody's Guide to Homeopathic Medicine or um, Homeopathic um, Emergency Guide by Tom Cruzel. Uh, Homeopathic Emergency Guide is actually one of the texts of our basic program. Um, I like that book a lot. And again, it, co it covers, you know, 
different kinds of, if you have a sore throat or a bladder infection or a headache, you know, what are some of the top remedies? So one of those two books would probably be a good accompanying um, information for the kit. That looks like a pencil box is how I would, like a, like a plastic pencil <laughs> okay. box about that size. It's really quite yeah, small. Would it's, you agree with that? Very like it's, small. Yeah, it's pretty small. It's and very small. Easy and to add to yeah. a first aid kit, yeah. or especially yeah. at your home. Yeah, easy to use. use oh that's very cute very, yeah mine's a lot bigger than that so i'm like i think i'm going to order one of these and have that around yeah. i this is what i have in my go bag because i live in northern california where the fires are so this is my homeopathy you know in my go bag so if there's um you know an emergency i've got my remedies with me oh another thing i should mention is we don't want to get remedies hot Okay. So it, we can, don't, do not leave it in your car in the summer. Um, Got it. That's what I was remedies. just about to ask you. That's okay. Yeah. Don't leave it in, and, in the heat. Okay. Yeah. And don't put it near your cell phone either. Um, and if you can avoid it getting x-rayed, although the pharmacists, you know, we buy these remedies that come from India where they're repeatedly x-rayed on the way over here and they work great. So I'm not sure about x-rays, but don't, don't just put your cell phone right on top of it and leave it there all day. Let's just put it that way. Try to keep it away from radiation such as cell phones, microwaves, and definitely uh, keep it out of the heat. So unfortunately, it's not something you should leave in the glove compartment of your car. Um, okay. That's <laughs> you, what I was wondering. Yeah. You have to keep it, keep it out of the, keep, keep it out of the heat. Yeah. So your school, is it something that, you know, moms and somebody who's at home that wants to learn more about homeopathy, are there options for them? Tell me more about your school. Yeah, well, um, I founded my school back in 1997 um, as a professional training program after I had already uh, taught in other programs. But we do have um, our basic module, which basically goes into uh, the 30 most important remedies for home care and how to, and we go through a very thorough process of how to um, practice acute homeopathy. So for um, these kinds of acute problems, such as cold, flu, COVID, uh, bladder infection, uh, yeast infections, cramps, headaches, something that has sort of a beginning, middle and end. Um, rather than a chronic problem, such as somebody, you know, who has asthma or depression, that's another level of homeopathy, and chronic care takes years to learn. But this level of care that you and I have been discussing today um, is something that you can learn in about six months and, um, and have some proficiency. Um, and I'm also just encouraging, like you, I want people to know more about homeopathy. So I'm encouraging all of my students from all over the country and the world to really um, get active in their own communities. I started something called the Homeopathy Compassion Network, specifically to support um, people who have finished the basic training so that if there's an emergency in their community, whether it's the pandemic, we were meeting like every week during the pandemic and doing COVID cases and stuff like that, but whether it's a fire or an earthquake or um, whatever you know people are um, suffering from in terms of trauma uh, to really get involved with the community and start passing out remedies. Um, so so wow, yeah, great. very much very much on the same page with you in terms of trying to get homeopathy to the people um, these days. Yes, I think empowering our, our, our people is, is just so helpful. I want to spread love and kindness. And I think homeopathy is a part of that. So you've been very helpful today. I, I would love to, um, uh, would you meet me again to talk about some deeper, so the depression and some of the chronic illnesses in another half hour, hour session another time? Sure. Yeah, that was actually one of my uh, specialties uh, during when I was practicing in Santa Cruz is working a lot with anxiety, depression. I'd be happy to discuss that. Yeah, I would love I would love to delve deep into that. So do you have anything else for today as a beginning listener for homeopathy um, that you'd like to close with today for people to take away? Well, I think it's a. Um, 
inexpensive and easy way to empower yourself to take care of yourself and your family. So I would encourage everyone to give it a try, even if it's just by going and buying a tube of Arnica, get some Arnica 30C um, at Whole Foods. I think it's maybe five bucks or something. It's not an expensive investment and just try it for um, any time there's an injury. And you, you may be, I mean, a lot of people have just been totally converted uh, to homeopathy just uh, from trying the Arnica. Um, one time um, I was with uh, somebody who, you know, knew nothing about homeopathy or I'm just thinking of one particular time, but this happens, you know, quite often. Um, but, you know, just a lot, just some, you know, sudden injury, you just whip out the Arnica, you give it to them and people are amazed, you know, at how quickly it works and helps. So that would be well, my tip. I've been, a, <laughs> that's, yeah, I've been a coach for team sports for decades now. And each one of those teams has been using Arnica and we have very rare I can't say any, there's, there were like two seasons out of many, many, many seasons where there were injuries. And so when we were using Arnica on a regular basis, they were preventing injuries too. And it was really neat to see the athletes be able to heal quicker and, um, and not even be, they were just moving so fast. They didn't recognize the, you know, like the, the honor, like the honor of the, the badge, like, wow how are you not getting so sore? How are you recovering so quickly? Well, I don't know. And off they go. But um, it was, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't take notes of, so I could use it as a case because it didn't matter to me, but um, I have many, many stories that it helped entire teams, um, if you will, uh, uh, let them know, let the parents know, how this can help them. And then the parents give it to the kids. And it was really, really helpful. Arnica is amazing. Mm, yes. <laughs> hey, well, I thanks agree. for starting your school because that is, um, I know how much that takes to do that. And I just appreciate your, all the energy and commitment that takes to keep that going and to um, just to have the passion you have to help others and to spread the news of homeopathy. And I just want to acknowledge you for that and to let you know that I appreciate that. Thank you. And I will, um, I will call you to set up another time and I do appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for listening today with Willa Kaiser and her information on homeopathy, which is really fascinating. I learned a lot and I've been around homeopathy a long time. She makes it easy to understand. So thanks for listening. Check out all of her links in the show notes and please call her if you have any questions. You can also send me an email if you have any questions. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Your Body Advocate with Ruth Cummings. We're so glad you've joined us today and truly believe you can live a pain-free, passion-filled life. To connect with Ruth, work with Ruth, or to grab your free ebook, go to ruthcummings.com. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss our next episode. Until next time, friends, be open, include the unincluded, think outside the box, and spread love and kindness one smile at a time.